Headlines are buzzing about Google's new anti-gravity platform, which claims its autonomous agents can build any software using the last Gemini 3 model. I was pretty skeptical. The promise is huge. So I decided to test it by creating two projects, one web app similar to Airbnb and a clone of the classic Wolfenstein 3D game. At the end, we'll see if it is the tool that finally changes the game, or is it just another wave of AI hype? Let's dig in and find out. First things first, what is Google Anti-Gravity? It's a new agentic development platform designed to manage autonomous AI agents that can plan, code, and deploy software for you. Think of it less like an AI assistant and more like a project manager. You delegate an entire project. It uses primarily Gemini 3 Pro, which Google calls its most intelligent model for coding. And it gives these agents direct access to an editor, a terminal, and even a browser to test the system. Our mission is simple, push this platform to its limits. We're starting with a full stack web app, and then we'll see if it can build a 3D game from scratch. We started on the IDE interface. This is just VS code most of us are used to. We'll just use this interface to set the anti-gravity preferences. For our first project, we want to perform research first. So we'll alter the review policy to request review. So the agent stops after each step. Now we press Ctrl E to switch to the agent page. Here we'll select to execute this on the playground, which is a workspace for prototyping. Choose the planning mode and set the model to Gemini 3 Pro. You can see we have other models options, but we'll keep with Google best model. Then we'll add the prompt to do the research. Our intention is to create a clone of the Airbnb platform. So we'll research its functionalities and layout. Here you can see what differentiate this platform from others. It's hybrid approach. We can use it to code, but also to research and plan the project. During the research, it opens a browser, scrolls through the page and extracts the information. It can use as the browser for research, but also to test and validate the code it's building. At the end, it generates a report with the core features, UI structure and layout. Everything we need to clone the page. Now let's do the app development. We'll ask to create a dog BNB, which is an Airbnb for dogs. The idea here is not just to test the abilities to code and generate the website, but to understand the goal. It first create a task list where we can follow the development and also make comments if we wish interact with the model. It also create an implementation plan where you can see the details. I'll hit proceed. It's asking our validation for each step due to the setup we did before, but I'll alter it to set the model to decide. On our prompt, we asked to create a prototype, which means no payments and validations to simplify the development. Because at the moment I recorded this video, Google Anti-Gravity was in public preview mode and had a limited quota per user. Nevertheless, this application has access to MCP servers and we asked to use the Supabase MCP server for the database. Let's see how it manages the development. It finished its development, as you can see on the task list. At the end, it generated a walkthrough report containing all the implemented features, the verification results, the database details and connection verification, and even an explanation on how to execute the app. Let's execute the server locally and see what it builded. We hit enter and wow, it really created it. He added some listing mock data to the database and included some images. Let's see if it's functional. The filters are functional. We can filter by type. If we click in one option, it brings us to the detail page that has more pictures and the full information about the property, a review section, and at the bottom, a booking section. It also generated a logo for our dog BNB. Okay, the layout is far from perfect, but all the basic functionalities are here. Even the integration with the Supabase MCP database is done. From start to end, it took about 15 minutes to create a working prototype. It's a fraction of the time it would take a human team without mentioning the cost. Google says the goal of anti-gravity is to let developers architect the solution instead of coding every single step. In their words, developers are now promoted to managers of agents. What is your opinion? Okay, it can create a web app, but can these agents handle the complex logic and motion of a video game? For our second test, we'll try to recreate the classic Wolfenstein 3D game, considered one of the greatest video games ever made. By the way, if you're finding this tutorial useful, hitting that subscribe button and liking the video really helps support the channel and ensures you don't miss out on future videos. Back to agent mode. This time we'll leave the agent to do its research and plan by itself. We select playground, the model, and add the prompt and hit enter. As you can see, the prompt is not complex, but gives the basic layout and game functions. 
It starts acting as a project manager and generating the project task. Different from the website we created before, these tasks are much more complex. I'm not sure if it will be able to make it. It also generates the implementation plan. At the top, we have the project goal and the stacks. Alongside the stacks, it added a message to the user reviewing and approve. Write below the file structure and the detailed steps. At any point, we can add comments to the steps and ask to refine or alter. Reading the implementation plan, I'm, I'm not sure if it incorporates all the original game functionalities. So before continuing, I prompt to do a research and update the plan, making sure to incorporate the features. It does the research and now we have an updated plan with all the original features. Now the plan looks complete and we hit proceed to let the agent create the game. I'll accelerate the video. We do not need to babysit the agent. We can leave the page or even open another chat to start a parallel task. But as you can see, from time to time, the agent asks for approval. It took some time, I'll say between 10 and 15 minutes, and it ended up with a message that it had completed the development of the game and as usual, the walkthrough document. As you can see, this is like a game manual with all the information we need to install and play the game. Let's prompt the agent to start the game for us so we can test it. We open our browser and set the game's local address and boom, we have an initial game screen. Using the mouse, we click the start and... Wow, it made it! Let's look around and see what we can do here. I can open the door. Ha, it has sound also. Bad robot. It hits me, but I can shoot also. Really? The gameplay looks super good and the 3D visuals are great too. It creates a fully functional game. While it wouldn't win any design awards, it just made what we asked. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison between what Anti-Gravity created and the original game. As context, the original game, first episode, took four months to be created by a small team at ID Software. So how does the final output stack up? Here are the big takeaways. The good. The zero shot generation is real. Anti-gravity's ability to take a high level idea and autonomously build an entire application is a genuine leap forward. The agent first architecture with its parallel agents and verifiables interrogative artifacts isn't just hype, it's a massive productivity boost. The bad. The last 10% is still the hardest. The AI is fantastic at building the structural frame of a project, but it struggles with nuanced UI polish and complex stateful logic. More importantly, Google explicitly warns that this is a public preview with security limitations. You absolutely need human oversight, especially for sensitive projects. So is Google anti-gravity the future? The answer is yes, but not now. I really like the way it's structured using the agent manager separated from the IDE and the capacity of plan the full project. For non-technical users, anti-gravity is a game changer. It genuinely delivers on the promise of bringing an idea to life with minimal coding. For developers, this isn't a replacement. It's the most powerful collaborator you've ever had. It's a tool that takes over the grunt work, letting you focus on the hard creative problems. It elevates the developer to the role of software architect. But now I want to hear from you. This raises a huge question. Now that we have agents that can do the building, what skills should developers be focusing on? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the latest AI tools. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.